Hi, it's Nicola and today I have an editing topic for you. It's the ultimate guide to polishing your writing. I think you're going to find it really helpful, so stay tuned. Today's show is sponsored by the Structure Success Video Training, which is a free training that helps you come up with a rough outline for your book. This is super helpful even when you're in the editing phase. It will help you figure out what needs to stay and what needs to yeah, get thrown out. So stay tuned for that one. I'll have more about it coming up. But if you're new to the show, welcome. It's where we learn how to write life stories for family and friends. And it'd be terrific if you could follow, subscribe and like the show. On the weekend, I got stuck into my garden with my pruning shears, got rid of some overgrown parts, some shrubs and some trees, and it was very satisfying. And I have to say, the same can be said when you're pruning back your first draft or your second draft, trying to come up with a final draft of your manuscript. You, all good writers, all writers need to do some editing. It's an essential part of the process. And this ultimate guide is going to set out the key steps that you need to take to do this. Now it's worth mentioning, this is the third in the ultimate series. I also have one about planning to write and then tips for writing a book. So make sure you check those out. I'll have everything linked for you. Now, when we're starting to edit, we need to think about some big picture things, okay? Need to revisit why did we start this process in the first place and who are we targeting? Who's going to be our reader? If we have these things clear in our mind from the outset for editing, it's going to make the process a whole lot easier. You're going to have some direction. Also keep in mind the guiding message that you want to convey through your book. So people sometimes call these the themes, but they're basically the guiding message you want people to take away from reading your book. Another good picture big picture idea to keep in mind is CPR. Now this is, when you're, when you're editing, you need to sort of think, okay, C is for being concise. We don't want really long sentences. We want to just be concise and take our reader along. We're not going to get them bored. Concise, keep that in your mind as a big picture concept. We also need to be P for is for precise. We want to make sure we've got the facts right. Don't want our readers to think we're not telling the truth. So we're not accurate. So P is for precise and R is for readers. Always keep them in mind. That's who your ultimate audience is. Keep them in mind in all the editing that you do. So that's big picture stuff right there. Once you've got that in your mind, we're going to zoom in until we're looking at each sentence, each word. We're going to zoom in for the real nitty gritty stuff. So as a copy editor for many years, this is what, what was my specialty or is my specialty. So you're going to be thinking about spelling errors, grammar errors. You're going to be looking at your tenses to make sure that they're consistent. Also, name spellings are first of all accurate, but also consistent. You know, you might use it on page 10. Someone pops up again in page 101. Have you used the correct spelling? So names, also facts. Double check all those facts, dates, uh, key events, make sure you've got them right. Then there's consistency with how you're using numbers. Are you spelling them out? Are you using the figures? Same for capitals. You might have something capped on one page and then not again. So pick something, uh, pick a style and be consistent in that. You're also going to think about killing cliches and tightening up any long sentences or wordy words you know instead of using a big word you could just use a short word make it easy for your reader and also while we're in this zoomed in state for editing don't forget to do the same for your captions captions are a real entry point for readers so you want to make sure you don't forget about those so that's a big picture and some detailed editing ideas but the next thing we need to think about is just some areas to pay special attention to. So this is section two of the ultimate guide on editing. Some special attention areas. Now, number one, I would say is dialogue. Having great dialogue is awesome for your readers. They love it. It puts them right into the time period you're talking about, sets the scenes, creates wonderful, colorful characters. 
So you need to make sure you're punctuating that all correctly and you're knowing how to use dialogue correctly. So you might want a partial quote, you might want some extended quotes. You need to know the difference and when to use them and how to write them accurately and consistently all the way through your book. So that's one, one tip to pay some special attention to is how you write dialogue. The other thing that sometimes trips people up is how to deal with foreign words. And this may not apply to you, but for some people it's a really big part of their book. So you might need to figure out how you're going to treat those words. Where, you know, you could put them in italics, you've got parentheses, single quote marks. You can even do a glossary. So you might want to think about how you're going to do that, come up with a specific strategy. So foreign words can require special attention. And another area I want you to revisit, you've probably touched on as you've been planning and writing your book, but when you're editing, you need to sort of think about your themes, your guiding message. First of all, you need to know what is a theme and why you need them and how to identify them in your writing. And this is really helpful because if you have this front of mind, it's going to be a guiding point for you when you're editing. Because if a story, you're not sure whether to an anecdote, you're going to keep it in or take it out, does it hark back to your themes? Then it probably does need to stay in. So you need to just refresh your themes and have them front and centre so that it'll help you with your editing. And that leads into another special area, which is titles and headings. So you're going to have the title of your book on the cover, obviously, and you may want to put titles for each chapter. And these, again, can hark back to your theme. And there's different techniques you can come up with these titles or these headlines. And I've got a specific article about that. It gives seven strategies. And some of them might be just telling the story, using um, rhyme, playing off words or names. So I'll let you discover all of that. But there's a special area that you need to think about when you're doing your final edit, and that's titles. OK, that must be the heavy lifting. That's the, the basics of doing a self-edit. But you will get to a stage where it is essential that you get some help. So this is the third part of this, this ultimate guide, getting some help. Now, we've got lots of tools at our disposal, first of all. Now, in this digital age, uh, I recommend you use an online dictionary. Of course, you can use an offline hard copy dictionary. I love a, a proper book. Uh, so use a dictionary. Also check out some spelling and grammar tools. They're, they're not going to catch everything, but they're a pretty good start. So make sure you use those. There's so many different tools out there now. You also might want to get some tips from a writing coach like me here, and they're just going to help make your writing better. So they're not going to do it for you, but they're going to give you some suggestions that you might want to work on. Things like making sure your introductory sentences for each chapter are really catchy and you know they're going to get interest of your reader. Also making sure that you let your writer's voice shine through your work. And making sure your copy is really clear. You want good, clean copy so that your writer is engaged. So consider a writing coach. And then you're going to probably need some kind of editor. And if you have got a friend or a relative who's good in this area, that might, that might suit you. Your time, your budget, that's great. Otherwise, you might want to hire someone like myself or there's lots of different services out there. But basically, you can write and you can reread to the cows come home, but you are just, you get too close to your work, to your writing, and you won't see all the errors. You do need someone, whether it's a friend, family member or someone you're, that you're paying to do this for you, you will need a fresh set of eyes to look at your work. There's four basic types of editors and they correspond to each phase of the writing process. So you have an editor who can work in the planning phase, then there's the writing phase, the polishing phase, and then finally the printing publishing phase. So these editors would be a manuscript editor, comprehensive editor, there's a copy editor and a proofreader. So again, head over to the article on this. It's um, got them all laid out and which step and which editor is what you need. So 
again highly recommend getting some help on your writing and I have a cheeky fourth step to this ultimate guide on editing and that is knowing when to finish you've worked on this book for so long it's consumed you I bet I mean I it was the same when I was writing my grandmother's story for her you get to a point when how <laughs> how long do you keep going how long's the piece of string when is it finished and I think you need to know the key signs and basically you have that feeling it's done look very close you, you're not going to catch everything but you are human but you need to know that that feeling you've given it a really thorough go you've got a good feeling about it and also that it's been edited to the standard that your readers expect okay so family and friends audience is going to be different to then an the wider public who might pay for a book so you need to edit to your readers expectations or to their standards what they what they will be forgiving about and finally you want to be really excited about sharing this book so you will get the feeling of knowing when you're finished so I hope you get to that point um, and just to recap we've talked about editing your own work from a high like a big picture concept ideas then zooming in all the way to word by word nitty-gritty editing things you need to to keep keep your mind on then we've talked about some key areas that you need to focus on this included dialogue foreign words themes titles and headings you really need to pay special attention to those then we talked about getting some help whether that's online tools, a writing coach, or some form of editor. And of course, finally, knowing when to finish editing. So I think that's pretty much everything you need to know about revising and editing your life story um, work, your project. And I'm hopeful that you will take all of this on board and use the power of editing to come up with a final manuscript that you're really proud of. So if you'd like to find out all the links that I've mentioned, like I said, this is a step-by-step -step guide to editing and there's a lot to it. And each step has a number of detailed articles, videos all over at my website. So you'll find the ultimate guide about editing at foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash edit. So please go have a look at that. I think it's a really helpful resource. Why are you there and why are you here? Leave me a comment. Are you up to the editing phase? How are you going? Have you been stuck on something? Or have you got a tip to share with me? I'd love to hear about it. You can also send me an email at foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash contact. Now when we're editing, it might be helpful to revisit the structure success video training. Now I usually recommend this at the beginning of the writing planning phase to help you come up with a roadmap for your writing of key events and key memories to include in your book but it might be handy to redo that and then that will help you with your editing you get a real zoomed in perspective of what is important what is essential that you want to convey in your book so you can get that if you haven't already haven't done the training it's at uh, foreveryoungautobiographies.com slash structure success sign up all you do is put in your email address and I'll send it to you it's completely free so highly recommend doing that one really can't hurt editing can help you get back on track now I'll be back again soon with another topic always love turning up and giving you some helpful advice for your writing so it'd be great if you could uh, follow subscribe and like the show because that'll tell you when a new topic's out and it also lets other people know what's going on in the show and it can attract them to tune in so until then thanks for being here with me today and happy writing <laughs>